Good morning. For many of us, it seems that the songs that are popular during our coming of age years in high school and in college maintain a special kind of meaning for us throughout our lives. In 1979, when I was a sophomore in college, Bob Dylan wrote the song, Gotta Serve Somebody, advancing the notion that whoever you are, whether rich or poor, doctor or chief, whether it be the devil or the Lord, you gotta serve somebody. The following year, John Lennon parodied that song with his song, Serve Yourself. Both songwriters, I think, give us the foundational question that we each need to answer on this great feast of Christ the King. Whether we will give our lives to a purpose, someone or something beyond ourselves, or whether we will promote the gospel of looking out for number one. It's a stark choice, but an option that each of us are given. Now, presumably, since we are gathered here in this church as followers of Jesus, as his disciples, that question is already settled for us. We have chosen to serve with our lives, Jesus, and his kingdom of purpose beyond ourselves. But I think we still have to return to this question over and over again in our lives because in this increasingly secular culture, there are so many other masters that can creep into our minds and our hearts and our lives and ask for our allegiance. I saw a cartoon on uh, Facebook the other day. Three kids sitting in the hallway outside of the principal's office. They are all waiting to see the principal because of some bad behavior. The first one says, I said the blank word. The second one says, I said the blank word. And the third one says, I said Merry Christmas. We live in an increasingly secularized culture. Relativism is prevalent. This is what I call the kind of whatever attitude of relativism. So we have to be careful about all of these different masters that want to come and claim our allegiance over the kingdom of Jesus. But another reason to return to this question over and over again is to reflect on the type of king that we serve. In this gospel reading from John, we heard today, Pilate mocks Jesus with the title of king. He reigns from an instrument of torture, a very strange crown, one of thorns on his head. He is not the king that we would be used to sitting regally on a throne with great secular power and military might behind him but a very different kind of king who shows us the path of self-sacrificing love as the purpose of his kingdom. My classmate, Bishop Robert Barron, tells this wonderful story of the day that Pope Benedict, our Holy Father before Francis, was elected. And when he first appeared out on the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica with some of the cardinals around him who had elected him as Pope, and one of the cardinals standing near him was Cardinal uh, George, Francis George of Chicago. And Bob is a priest of Chicago, so Francis was his bishop. And he, watching this on TV, he saw this very interesting kind of quizzical look on Francis George's face as he's standing there on the balcony. And when he returned to Chicago, he had an opportunity to ask him. He said, I was watching this on TV, Cardinal, and I saw your face. There was something, what was going on in your head as you were standing there? 
And Francis said, I had this incredible experience. As I looked out over the crowd in St. Peter's Square, I could see off in the distance the Colosseum. The ruins of the Colosseum. of Christ. And yet here we are, 2,000 years later, all over the world, a kingdom of priests and people gathered in the name of Jesus and on the path that he laid out for us. It's an interesting thing to reflect on. The kingdoms of this world come and go, and they have through the ages. What is it? that keeps the kingdom of Christ, you and I, keeps us alive and vital and energized and going, it is, of course, the Holy Spirit is at work in us. In a few moments, we'll hear in the preface for this feast the characteristics of the kingdom of Christ. It is a kingdom of love and of peace, a kingdom of joy, of forgiveness, of mercy, a kingdom of justice. These are the ways that we go about building this kingdom that belongs to Jesus, serving our Lord. In the crucifixion scene that shortly follows this exchange in today's gospel between Jesus and Pilate, we know that there is a there are two thieves who are crucified on either side of Jesus. And one of them asks him, Lord, um, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responds to him, this day you will be with me in my kingdom. And I think that comes as a question from Jesus to each of us every day and every moment. Will you be with me in building my kingdom today, this moment. That's the question I ask you to take with you this week, to reflect on the ways with your life that you are serving Jesus and that you are building his kingdom. How is Jesus for you, your way, your truth, and your life?